Hey guys, it's Miranda. I am sitting down again with Ben Joes. Today we actually have a little bit of a lighter topic for you. So the past couple weeks we've been hitting it heavy. We got into the comfort zone last week. We will also be hitting it heavy next week when we unpack fear. But for today we have a little bit of a lighter topic. We are going to be discussing gratitude. So we won't waste any time. We're going to get right into it. Ben, why or what made you adopt a gratitude practice to begin with? So gratitude is something that comes up quite a bit in like mentality and development circles. And it's obviously why we're discussing it here and why you brought this up as a subject. For me, um, it was the positive energy aspect of it. Being able to think of what is good even when I perceive everything around me to be bad or to be going poorly. Um, generally, this has been something um, that has been used in almost in case of emergencies in a way in terms of things are going real bad, having a real bad day. And as I've mentioned before, uh, battling anxiety and depression, when things get real dark, being able to take that moment and say, well, this is good, this is good, this is good. You know, I'm grateful for for this or I'm, I'm grateful to have experienced that or I'm grateful for to be in this moment. It allows me to bring some positivity into a seemingly, uh, and I think I think perspective is something that we're going to discuss a lot right here, but in, into a, uh, bringing positivity into a seemingly negative state in order to bring me closer to neutral and closer to positive overall. Um, but what about you? What, what, what is it that, that drew you to, to gratitude practice? I think, um, obviously very similar changing perspective is huge, which like you said, we'll unpack here. But for me, it was more of kind of bringing me into the here and now and taking me into that present moment. For me, I like to refer to it as being in the cloud. Like whenever I am feel like I'm all over the place, like hands in the air, just thinking about the million different things I have to do that day or this week or whatever it may be, worrying about the future. That's kind of how I got into gratitude was sitting down, like taking that time out of your day to sit down and be like, okay, what is actually right now? Like, what am I, what do I have in this exact moment that I'm grateful for and that can kind of bring me out of that cloud and back into the present? Um, so that was a big, big reason for me that I got into practicing gratitude. But so for you, like, I think that's what I want to talk about today is I think a lot of people know that practicing gratitude is something maybe they should be doing or could be doing. Um, but they don't exactly know how to go about it. So for you, what, how do you go about it? What, how do you practice gratitude? So when I started with this and I believe I first was brought to it through the Tim Ferriss podcast and all of his writing, it's a common theme through, um, many of the innovators and leaders that he interviews is they, they all demonstrate it's meditation and gratitude practice, which do kind of go hand in hand, but can, are, are very separate. They all had some level, male, female, didn't matter. Uh, founders, creators, whatever, didn't matter. All the greatest minds that he interviewed had some version of a gratitude practice running through them. And so in the beginning, before I was surrounded by people like you who, who have a more developed practice, it really was more of a, Hopefully, in the darkest of moments, I could remember to take a breath and in my mind or say out loud when it was perfect. Perfectly would be me voicing it out loud, and we've said power of voice in the past. I would say three things off the top of my head that were, whether it was like bringing me joy, that were making my life easy, even though I was perceiving it to be hard in that moment. But it was just something I would say out loud. I didn't write it down. I didn't record it in any way. And then that has evolved since to be basically what my journal prompts are each day. I start with at least one because sometimes it's one's all I need. Sometimes the one gives me the jumping off point and now I write two or three pages. Um, but often it's two to three. And I'll just start my journaling with today I'm grateful for this, today I'm grateful for that, today I'm grateful for that, and then let wherever my mind goes flow from there. And what I find is, is that starting that unpacking on a positive note affords me the opportunity to view my life through a, a more favorable lens. And honestly, 
that's more realistic for me. So it is now a practice that takes place in my notebook daily or most days, I should say. Let's not claim to be perfect here. <laughs> um, but most days it is something that is being written down, but it is in journal format more often than not. Um, it is going to be paragraphs to where even when I was getting ready for us, our sit down, I had to read a lot of weird thoughts because <laughs> not all of it was gratitude. And I was like, oh, what was I feeling that day? Um, but a lot of times the topic sentence of each paragraph or each break of paragraphs is a, a point of gratitude. And so that's that's what it looks like for me. Um, yours is more, more specific, more developed, yes? Yeah, I mean, I actually kind of started in a, a way that was similar to yours. When I first started getting into journaling, I guess I didn't really know how to start. So I started in a similar way of like, okay, what am I grateful for? And just like you, that would kind of lead into whether it was a subconscious flow or what else was kind of just going on in my mind that day. Um, but as I've started getting into journaling more, my journaling practice has evolved a lot as I've grown and changed with it. But now um, I journal morning and night, most days, as I would say as well. I that's that's a big point here. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. I definitely miss days. And I think that's a great place to bring up, too, as you said, saying it out loud. You know, maybe that's not a perfect day. You forgot your journal at home or you were just rushing that morning and you maybe didn't make the time for it. It You can say it out loud to yourself, too. You're always going to have that option. Maybe that morning you didn't have the time to write it down. So you said it out loud to yourself as you were driving to work. You know, there's no wrong way to go about it. But for me, as I was kind of evolving my journaling practice, now I separate them into different categories. So I have just one big category is actually gratitude by itself. So I kind of attack it in a way of bullet points now. Um, so I kind of think through my day, like I'll sit down at night and that's when I journal about gratitude is in the evening. And I'll kind of just replay the day back in my head and go through you know, my morning, my midday, my evening and think about different aspects that I was grateful for throughout that day. Um, I also try to make sure I think of different categories. So not just like, okay, my big day as a whole, but also like specifically what in work was I uh, grateful for that day? What in my relationship was I grateful for that day? Kind of just thinking of different categories to kind of help you along. Um, and then I always finish up with another separate category that is just about myself. So what I'm grateful for, for who I am. And I always kind of finish up with that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's incredibly useful. Kind of using that back to your why and the perspective and, and bringing you into the present and the cloud. I mean, so much of what you touched on is it, themes of it have run through our past podcasts or past episodes. But do you... Is it easier or harder for you to do this if the day was difficult? Physically, mentally, emotionally draining, you know, just one of those days. I would say it's probably harder. Harder? Yeah, because then, you know, you're, because if I'm sitting there and I'm reflecting about my day and it was kind of a crappy day, I'm like, dang, okay, what went well today? But then, again, that is kind of why I like doing it at night because then I'm able to reflect, think back, and like, oh, okay, even though I felt like it was an overwhelmingly crappy day, there are these few takeaways of grateful things or good things that did happen, and I can kind of just go to bed in more of a positive mindset of like, all right, you know, yeah, it was a bad day, but these couple things were good. I'm grateful to have those even if it was a crappy day. And now I can kind of go to bed with a different perspective that the next day is going to be different and be better. Yeah, and and that's what that's what's useful to me. I agree with you that when things are tough, it's more important that I do it, but it is m much more difficult for me to get meaningful words down on paper, at least at first. Usually I can break through if I take the time because you, I get very dis – like. I get very discouraged if it's a tough day and I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to be grateful right now. Yeah. And I think that's the first thing we're overcoming is like, we're kind of wired to want to dwell in our current state. And if, if life is stressful, we want to dwell in that stress, whether it's a pity party or 
genuine belief that it won't get better. Who knows? For me, I always feel like we we want to feel bad for ourselves at times as if we are celebrating our suffering. And so then the idea of like, mm-hmm. okay, psst, let's go ahead and celebrate what's good. I don't want to do that right now. Well, it's almost like you're this amazing, strong person because you deal with, with so much and you work through so much. And that's when you play like the victim the victim role and like, Oh, feel sorry for me. Cause I went through all this, but like, I'm still tough and awesome. Um, so I can definitely relate to that, but I've also, you know, I've sat down at the end of a rough day and been like, screw this and like closed my journal. Like I've definitely been there. It's not, it's not to say like it's easy every day. And some days there's lists and lists and I have 15 bullet points of things and some days I literally am like pulling out my hair trying to come up with one or two and so that's that's something that I want to make sure we get out there too that it's not always the easiest thing to come up with things but that's why I kind of like to view the different categories of like okay what from work what from home or relationships because you can kind of just that'll help give you a sense of direction is where to go I think yeah and I think I think that that this is this is something you and I have discussed already and something that that we're going to discuss further here but what's not necessarily obvious it wasn't obvious to me is gratitude and its connection to something we talk about almost every week which is like vulnerability mm-hmm. because here's the deal I can look at your life and be like well, I don't know Miranda you have a, an amazing boyfriend and now you have a great puppy and your mom loved you so much she came down here <laughs> and everybody that you work with loves working with you and so like really like how do you not have a long list of, of things you're grateful for because mm-hmm. that's easy for me to look at your life and on a good day you're like yeah 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 I agree with that I agree with that but like if you were having a bad day right now and I said those things you'd be like screw you man like that's not I don't I don't want to be in that space right now and I think it's because it's there, there is that. Yes, let's let's celebrate suffering, and I'm strong, and and, and I'm strong because I get through the, the pain. But I think it's also the 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 vulnerability required to be positive. I think that people that are positive get written off a lot as being kind of like hippy dippy, and I say that term a lot. Um, <laughs> but they, there's not a lot of credibility on that side. You, there's more, far more credibility on being negative on someone that's very like stern and f- we're going to say focused, but like an asshole like me, I'm an asshole. Like, <laughs> and when I think about being positive, whether it's, I think I'm going to lose my edge or I just think that positivity is a little fluffy and it's not productive. Uh, there are a lot of things that are misinterpretations and very uh, toxic for us, but that we adhere to. And I think that it takes someone being willing to be vulnerable to truly admit what they're grateful for and admit those moments in their day, those things or people in their lives that do bring positive things to them. Well, I totally agree. We actually this past weekend were watching Dr. Brene Brown's Call to Courage on Netflix. And um, there's so many good nuggets from that. But actually one thing that she did discuss almost – was that like you're afraid you're almost afraid to be happy because you're afraid then that it's going to be taken away from you and I think kind of what you were just saying goes right along with that like oh man if I'm happy and I appreciate and I am grateful for all these things and I realize that I have all these great things then I also realize that they could be taken away from me and so we become fearful in that and she actually spoke to this as well and said that joy is the most vulnerable of human emotions and that according to all her research she does a lot of research on shame which is super interesting to me but through her research she found that the people who could best experience this emotion joy they all shared only one variable in common and that one thing was that they practiced gratitude And that's essentially one of the reasons why we're talking about it today, because if we're able to practice that gratitude, ultimately it's going to help us experience that joy more because like we said, we're changing that perspective. You're shifting to the positivity. You're becoming more in the present moment than in the cloud. I refer to it as, 
um but that's that's why we're here obviously everyone wants to be happy that's what we're essentially chasing is happiness and practicing gratitude is one small thing that we are in control of that can help us do that i think it's important to, to reiterate like gratitude practice is a prereq it's a prerequisite for joy yeah. it's not like sometimes it was present it's a pre you you need you need a gratitude practice. That was science. Like, yeah, like that, that was research. This is a woman. If you if if somehow you've been under a rock and you don't know who Brene Brown is, get <laughs> out there. You need to read a little bit more. Um, I'm actually finishing Dare to Lead right now and Braving the Wilderness. All of her, it's amazing. All of her work's amazing, and basically all of her work is based on her PhD research. Like this is stuff she she researches at a, at the scientific level. So, um. I think that'd be too easy to gloss over. It's like, oh, if I get a gratitude, I mean, I, it'd be nice if I did, but I'm gonna pursue joy on my own. I think the other thing to keep in mind is we're talking a lot about journaling, and obviously, we bring that up pretty much every time you and I sit down, mm -hmm. and it's something that's big in your life. It needs to be something concrete like this, at least in the beginning. Yes, the more enlightened of us probably don't have to write it down because we adopt gratitude in every moment of our day and we're able to walk through our day and always be aware specifically of what we're grateful for. But let me tell you something. I can go days without being grateful if I'm not like intentional yeah. about writing it down. Like challenge me. I bet I've gone weeks before without once thinking of one positive thing in my mind. And for me, it has to be a diligent, intentional practice, and that's what I'm evol like moving towards because when it was break the glass in case of emergency, that was really when it was the worst. Like, I can't get out of bed. What is the point of life? I'm desperate for hope. Okay, let me go through what is good. Right. I waited until it got that bad. And so for me, moving towards writing it down, and eventually I do want to sit down every night like you do because I think the way you do it um, – is really beneficial to unpack the day and not go to bed with anger or resentment or worry about things that you could have easily just jotted down like, oh, oh, this is not this is not what I thought. Yeah. And um, it can it can take five minutes. Like it doesn't have to be this huge thing that you concoct in your head of like, oh my God, like now I have to spend twenty minutes a night. Like I don't have twenty minutes. And that's the thing too, is like we lead such busy lives. Like you were saying, you can go weeks without doing this or like your day is so busy that if you don't have that time or like intentionally carve out that time to sit down and do this, yeah, you could spend up to years like never even having a thought of like, oh, I'm grateful for that. I appreciate that in this present moment. Like we, li we live such busy lives that we have to now, I think it's the most important now that we actually take the time to carve out that moment to sit down and write, write these things down. Or like I said, if you forget it, say it out loud, but having that intention to carve out five minutes of your day, knowing that it's going to help you lead a more joyful life. It's almost like, why wouldn't you? We, we live such busy lives and we've been conditioned to be hypersensitive to the negative and not the positive. I can tell you my whole week ahead, I can tell you every potential stressor on my schedule, but I cannot tell you where there's likely to be joy or likely to be fun. And that's not because it's not present. When I think about it, I'm going, oh, actually, that interaction should be pretty positive. But it's not what comes to mind first. When I think of my day ahead, it is, ugh, I've got to be up at this hour, and I've got to go do this, yep. and then there's this, and there's this. When I think about my week, I'm like, oh, there's that conversation on Thursday i got to have, and I don't really want to have that. And I, I'm not also pairing that with like, oh, but then I get to go get coffee and read. Like, that's going to be great. I am super sensitive to what is going to tax me mm -hmm. and not what is going to bring me life. And this is something that, that forces me out of that because, again, it's a shift in perspective. One of my favorite things to say in the gym is your feelings are a lie because your feelings are irrational more often than not. Never let your boyfriend or girlfriend say that to you <laughs> because that is none of their business. You have your feelings, okay? But when you're with yourself, understand that my feelings are largely inaccurate. The stress that I take on that day, probably, at least the way that I'm wired, is a little too much for what the actual occurrence was. Mm -hmm. And it takes me in the moment going like, no, 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 no. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful that that person works for me or helps me with this. I'm grateful that I get to get out of here and walk my dog. Like, I have things that can bring real perspective. Like, oh, 
I got to stay at the gym for another hour because I got to wait for a delivery. It's really not that bad because I'm grateful that I have this place and I can sit in the air conditioning. I can do some work or hell, I can relax while I'm here. Like there's something that can always give you the real on it because we want to, again, go into that negative. Right. It's your mindset and it's your mindset towards everything. Like even if you shift your mindset towards this practicing gratitude journaling thing and you don't look at it as again one of those things that you have to do if you look at it as something like wow this is an opportunity and this is something that i can control and do for myself to ultimately make myself have a better life and be happier then i think you're going to have a different outlook on it and be more excited to do it instead of viewing it as oh i have to do this you know and, and obviously that goes with with everything in life. But did you want to share any specific <laughs> examples of kind of what your gratitude practice looks like? And then I'll kind of share a few of mine. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's been fun going back through all these, <laughs> going back through the journal. Um, you know, you and I realized that we probably do a few episodes on different journaling things and yeah. maybe we should just have a, have one episode where we just read the most embarrassing stuff. <laughs> we should. That, from that could be a fun one. Journals. Um, I mean, I've been journaling since middle school, which is, I don't know how I started, but I have, I have so many notebooks, but in here, the way that I write it, 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 again, I've said it's in paragraph form, but things that I've turned out to be grateful for. So for those who don't know, I used to live in the gym. I've written down three times in this notebook that I'm grateful to be able to be comfortable in the warehouse in which I work. Um, and that was important for me at those times because this was also seen as a stressor. This was something that was very stressful for me, was having to live at work, be at work all the time. But in those moments where I, I had, I saw there was a move out date established by this time and just saying it out loud, or in this case, putting it down on paper, allowed me to see the good in me being able to be here, what I was able to do by being here versus focusing on the fact that I always had to be at work or, or things like that. I have some lighter ones in here. Um, twice I have found that I'm grateful for my dog, Jax. Um, <laughs> but th that is a, a very powerful one because I am, whether it's, I mean, he's the perfect dog. He's, he's, oh, he's so good. So he's brought me, I mean, that dog saved my life, I, I swear. And he's a dog I didn't want. He was a gift. Don't give living creatures as gifts, <laughs> please. Okay, but it worked out. And he absolutely is in the last seven years. He has saved my life time and time again. Uh, a number of times I've been grateful for Miranda, as it turns out, in her short time with hey. us so far. Um, she's been written down a number of times in different capacities. The one, the most recent, and uh, I don't think I told you this, but I'm, I'm very grateful for you because I am able to... I love the conversations we're able to have. And I am we still discuss the same things that I would discuss with myself had you not arrived, <laughs> but it's a lot more therapeutic to have those conversations out loud. Um, I of course have Joel all over this notebook because when it was just he and I, this place couldn't have, have functioned the way that it did without him and the amount of stress I've put him under at different times. And he's, he's forged his way through very, very powerful. And then the little stuff family comes up. I, it, and, and, and those are, the things like the dog, the family, in here I have a uh, Legos, Legos and puzzles came up, and things like that, the little stuff, uh, I really enjoyed. I think, I don't know if it was this notebook or what I looked at last night, but it was like plantain chips. I wrote that down. <laughs> yes, I write down food sometimes, too. That's it, because it does bring me happiness. It brings me joy. I am grateful. It does make my day better, and it would be really easy, and I would encourage people that have not yet started this practice that are inevitably going to to judge themselves mm -hmm. for what they write down. Don't be above writing down plantain chips. Like don't be above writing down like, I really like the shoes I have. Like there's no such thing as like too shallow because gratitude is still gratitude. And it can be the gateway. Yeah. And so like for me, like plantain chips are real, like real. Like you give me a bag of good plantain chips and they're not all <laughs> the same by the way, okay? You get me a bag of good plantain chips, you bring me joy. It's like a, a black coffee. If you walked in here with an iced coffee, said it before, not many of you do it, all right? Bring me an <laughs> iced coffee, and, like, my whole week got better, you know? Because there's, the like, the, the selflessness of you doing it. I'm super aware of that. And the fact that I love, ridiculously flawed, to the, to the amount of being flawed, I love iced coffee. Like, such a small thing. It takes yeah. 50 cost 15 cents to make cost five dollars to buy whatever reason but like such a small thing but it truly does bring me happiness so like 
don't if you're going to start this and you should don't be above plantain chips don't be above i love black coffee yeah. um and there's, then that'll, that'll lead you to the deeper stuff exactly that's what i was going to say is there's no win too small like if you're looking at your wins from the day nothing is too small anything that kind of made you feel good that day whether it was like somebody complimented you and your watch like awesome cool you're grateful for that watch write it down you know what's funny i'm grateful for the notebook the yeah. notebook <laughs> that i write my gratitude list in and, and this particular notebook janai got for me for christmas my birthday christmas my birthday christmas and it's amazing <laughs> it's amazing okay so yeah absolutely sorry what what do you got? What, well, what are some fun little nuggets you put down? It was kind of funny because when you were talking about your dog and the people in your life, I actually have a lot of this, the same things down here, which is kind of an interesting thing to bring up is that, you know, when we're sitting down writing down our what we're grateful for, a lot of times people do come up. And I think that's important to kind of look at because we tend to treat the people we love the most in our lives and care about the most in our lives the shittiest, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And I think that kind of helps change perspective, too, of like, dang, I really am grateful that I have this person in my life, even though they drive me nuts or whatever. Like, looking back through this, I have, you know, my mom on there a lot, even though she makes me a little crazy sometimes, like I'm grateful to have her and like that I have parents who love me and care about me and are willing to help me out in any aspect that they can. Um, you know, I have you on here as well. I'm also grateful for our conversations and that, you know, all the opportunities you've given me so far, just coming down here and helping me grow as a person. I also have Nova on there, my dog. <laughs> I have Nova making me smile specifically and the kennel for her. I was grateful for that, even though she got out of it many times. Um, <laughs> um, I also have random things such as like the fact that education is so easily accessible now. Like we're able to learn off podcasts and TV and things like that so easily. Um, grateful for my body and that it's able to allow me to exercise. I think a lot of us take that for granted sometimes like, oh, I have to go work out. But again, when you're shifting that perspective, it becomes, wow, I'm able to work out like I get to. So there's some people out there that literally can't and don't have that choice. Um, so mine go a lot of different directions, but it can be anything as small as those plantain chips or as big as the people that surround you. But I think the one thing too, that is very um, unique to my gratitude practice, like I said earlier, is that I always separate, you know, the things I'm grateful for from my day, those are different aspects of my life. But I always have a little separate category down here as far as what I'm grateful for, for myself. And I think that's very important to start practicing as well um, obviously once you start this start small even if it's just three things from that day that you write down but also try to challenge yourself as you go through to think of things you're grateful for for yourself too like that's uh, arguably the most important part um, so some things i just have down for me um, would be that i have the courage to try uh, I think that's a pretty cool thing. I also have my self-discipline to work hard even when no one is watching. Um, another one would be my honest and open communication, how I always want the best for others and that I'm able to feel everything deeply and thus love hard. So, you know, it can be anything as deep as that or just the fact that you smile at people when they look at you. I just think it's important to also reflect and bring up things that you like about yourself and that you're grateful for about who you are. I think that's a a, a great place to, to kind of put as a it's the epitome of gratitude list is being able to write about yourself. And maybe for some of it's too easy, so I don't want to go too <laughs> far. But like for you and me, it's definitely the hardest thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure we, we have episodes in, in, in the queue for affirmation and things like that. So we don't need to get too much detail, but you're absolutely right. Sometimes actually my most powerful gratitude lists are the ones where it's, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to whatever, or I'm grateful that I'm, I'm good at, or I have a propensity for doing whatever. And it's difficult. Those are sometimes the most uncomfortable little writing sessions, but yeah, yeah I think that they're definitely they, they also can be the most powerful but that's it challenge brings the power so and again knowing that 
no one's going to read this but you, so there's nothing to be embarrassed about and feel conceited about if you are grateful for things about yourself. No one's reading it. It's only you. Um, so yeah, I think that's where we'll kind of wrap it up here. Thank you guys for listening. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to do this. We shared with you different ways that we like. If you have a different way that maybe you already practice, feel free to comment and share that as well. So we'd love to learn about you and how you practice gratitude. But if you're looking for a way to start, that is it. Just do it. Grab the notebook, write it down, say it out loud if you need to. But the big thing is just getting started. So as always, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you guys are thinking. Next week, we will go a little bit deeper. This was our lighter topic of gratitude. But next week, we will be unpacking fear. So make sure you tune in for that. As always, thanks for listening, guys. Have a great rest of your day.